Ever since the climax of Avengers Endgame, where Tony Stark sacrificed himself by using the Infinity Gauntlet to destroy Thanos and his army, there has been speculation about Robert Downey Jr. returning to the Marvel fold in his signature role. The typical explanation for how Mr. Stark might return from the dead is to have another version of him appear from a parallel universe. Now it seems that the Avengers 1 and 2 writer-director Joss Whedon has come up with his own unique solution to resurrecting Marvel's flagship character. According to my source, the Buffy the Vampire creator has handed in a script to his former boss, Kevin Feige, entitled, Stark, Beyond the Infinite. Apparently, his screenplay opens with Tony Stark awaking in a cave. He is in plain clothes, the Iron Man suit does not, I am told, feature anywhere in Joss Whedon's story. Physically, Tony Stark is fully healthy, but bewildered. He gets to his feet, he is alone in the cave, which he slowly realizes is virtually identical to the one that he was held captive in way back in the first Iron Man film, before he'd even constructed the initial suit. We share Tony Stark's confusion, is this the afterlife? Or has everything that has happened in the Marvel Cinematic Universe been a dream? Tony follows a light source down a tunnel and out of the cave. He is greeted by the sight of a vast, alien landscape. He does not immediately see any other life forms, but a familiar voice addresses him from behind. The former Avenger spins around in alarm to behold a being whom he believed he'd dispatched once and for all. Thanos. The purple tyrant is calm, despite bearing a scar the circumference of his neck, Thor's handiwork with the axe has clearly been undone. Wherever this is, Thanos has been here for a while. Thanos proceeds to assure the Earthling, who is a fraction of his size, that he wishes him no harm, and informs Tony that he has been instructed to bring him to their new god. The pair then traverse this realm on foot, and reach a plane that stretches towards a sprawling castle. Above this plane float some of Tony's enemies, specifically those whom he'd used the gauntlet on to make disappear. This is evidently where they reappear. They are unconscious, and among their number is Thanos number two, the one bested on Tony's homeworld. The human and the alien warlord continue on below these suspended beings and proceed into the castle. Eventually, the duo enter a spectacular hall, where a throne glides towards them. In this chair is a being dressed in regal finery, who is of a feminine, humanoid appearance, except for the fact that she has two functioning heads. Even the great, resurrected form of Thanos is a neutered titan in the presence of this live figure. The throne halts before the two males. Tony gasps. He discerns that one of the heads is identical to that of Natasha Romanoff, aka Black Widow. The other head, the right one resembles that of Thanos's adopted daughter, Gamora. These were the two characters sacrificed in order for the Soul Stone to be obtained, a detail that doesn't seem to be coincidental. It is apparent from their demeanor and from the voice that emits alternately from either mouth that the two ladies have been merged together and possessed by an entity from outside of the multiverse. This character is supposedly referred to in Joss Whedon's screenplay as the goddess, with she her pronouns utilized. The goddess would then offer up a chunk of exposition to Tony Stark, their surroundings would morph to illustrate her tale. Long ago, in her former amorphous state, the goddess had discovered in a timeless void a pulsating gem, which when she communicated to it the idea of a tangible universe, blew apart, creating both the cosmos and what would be known as the Infinity Stones. In the beginning, there was one universe, but every time the goddess meddled, skipping about through its timeline, a duplicate universe would snap into being. This has resulted in the creation of a tumbling, ever-expanding hay bale of cosmi, varying wildly in their likeness to the original. The goddess states that she has the ability to scan every inch of every one of these universes, from beginning to end, which is seemingly what either head does when not articulating words. The goddess tells Tony Stark that his reward for harnessing the power of the stones is to go back to Earth, to an earlier time, a journey that will produce yet another universe. Tony is to do the goddess's bidding there in this new, alternative timeline. He retains fond memories from his previous incarnation and is somewhat heartened by this development. There is though, a stipulation. Tony will be accompanied by Thanos number one. 
when Tony inquires the goddess if she might have a hat and coat that would potentially help make the purple behemoth blend in back home, she steps forth. With the green hand of a rematerialized Gamora, she produces a sack. This, she then hands to Thanos. The towering alien then obediently bows before the open sack. To Tony's horror, Thanos's head detaches itself from its body and drops into the bag. There is no blood, the twin wounds seal over almost instantaneously. Headless Thanos hands the bag to the startled earthling. Before the goddess whisks the human away, she informs Tony that he is now an upgraded version of the one who perished. Tony essentially has many of the powers that he did as Iron Man. Super strength and the ability to fly, but without the need for the suit. The goddess will communicate with Tony similarly to how Jarvis once did, except inside his head, rather than via the mask. A portal appears behind Tony, and the goddess invites him to test his newly acquired gift by flying through it. Bemused, Tony Stark grips the neck of the heavy sack and obliges his savior and possible tormentor. I am told that this is, basically, how the first act of Joss Whedon's script plays out. It's my understanding that the story then continues in World War II era Norway, where the opening events of the first Captain America film are recreated. The Red Skull obtains the Tesseract, also known as the Space Stone. As the fiendish leader of Hydra gloats, he is struck from behind and rendered unconscious. Tony Stark floats above him, it is evident that he whacked the villain with Thanos's head, who grumbles from inside the sack. We cut to a shield base somewhere in the US, Howard Stark, Peggy Carter and other operatives are discussing Hydra's schemes when Tony arrives to present them with the Tesseract. He also places Thanos's head on a table, and the alien details to his stunned audience the events that led to his initial demise. The ripple effect of Tony Stark's intervention at this juncture in the battle between the forces of good and evil means that, in this timeline, many of the Avengers will never come to exist, including Tony himself, and Steve Rogers won't be injected with the super serum and become Captain America. The Tesseract will be utilized by S.H.I.E.L.D. to defeat Hydra once and for all, and to facilitate the production of limitless clean energy. The second act of Joss Whedon's potential film would largely explore the creation of a utopian society on Earth. Decades elapse in montage-like fashion as a non-aging Tony forms a close friendship with Howard and romances Peggy. It is clear that the goddess's motivation for sending Tony Stark back to Earth was ultimately pure. A familiar threat looms however. A mischievous Loki observes from the shadows. The Asgardian snatches Thanos' head from a transparent case, essentially freeing the alien from his cell. Together, they plot to entice the intact Thanos of this universe, along with his army, into conquering Earth and claiming the Tesseract. Minus the aid of the Space Stone, the extraterrestrial invaders have to take a longer route to activate the film's third act. And so the third Thanos of the movie eventually arrives with his battalions, to find an Earth weakened through peace. There is no Avengers outfit to offer up any great resistance. Thanos smashes through the planet's primarily AI-integrated weaponry and marches towards the fortified structure housing the Tesseract. Tony Stark strives to block him, but can merely slow his progress. A bolt from the heavens briefly alters the momentum of proceedings. Thor enters the fray in potentially Chris Hemsworth's final outing as the God of Thunder. In what is predicted to be an epic contest, Thanos bests Thor, inflicting upon the Asgardian a fatal blow. Meanwhile, the goddess upon her throne watches these events unfold, the death of Thor and ruination of Earth is displayed on the surrounding walls. She decides to intervene. Tony Stark meekly attempts to fight on. As he has discovered over time, his tweaked form is capable of producing energy blasts and of rapid physical regeneration. His strength, though, is only a fraction of that of his opponent. Tony is struck by Thanos and sent crashing through the side of a building. He is unable to participate in this fight any longer. A portal opens to allow for new combatants to occupy the field of battle. Leading the charge, in what I would call a surprising twist, is Thanos number two. He and his army, who had been vaporized by the Infinity Gauntlet, have been restored by the goddess and sent forth to defend this alternative earth. There follows a brutal battle, 
and the newly unleashed Thanos emerges victorious, smiting his cosmic clone with a sword. As the fighting peters out, the goddess emerges from the portal and conjures another, this one leading back to Thanos's homeworld. The Titan and his kin trudge into it, with no hint of ever wishing to return. The goddess then approaches Tony Stark's broken body. Behind her, Loki, carrying the head of Thanos number one, scurries through the first portal. The god of mischief dashes through the castle and into the throne room, where he carelessly reunites the pieces of Thanos, tossing the purple noggin at its feet. Loki pounces onto the throne. He discovers promptly that he is not worthy. A force surges through him. Subsequently, this Loki is reduced to atoms. The goddess reacts to none of this. The two-headed deity stands over the earthling, and commands him with a projected thought to arise once more. Joss Whedon's film would end, supposedly, with Tony Stark cheerfully assisting in the restoration of New Earth. He is watched by a blonde woman and two children, who are presumed to be his wife and kids. There is even said to be a post credit scene planned, with Thanos No. 1 sitting in front of the castle, struggling to keep his head and body bound together. He fails. The Disney Marvel post endgame output has varied wildly in terms of quality. From the very good, Guardians Vol. 3, to the not very good, practically everything else. I'd be fine with the creation of a side universe that reintroduces our favorite comic book characters in fresh, updated ways without erasing all that came after Tony Stark's fatal finger snap. The She-Hulk show would still be canon, but it would exist like a lump of dog dirt in a neighboring garden. Hey, I take exception to thought comparison. Some people can actually find a use for dog dirt, to help their plants grow for example. But seriously, I'd love to see Downey Jr. return as Stark, even in a modified form, which he would have to be, the character died after all. I also welcome Joss Whedon's return to the franchise. He's good at writing genuinely funny quippy dialogue and constructing compelling strong female characters. Whedon understands, like James Cameron, that the key is not to make all the male characters artificially weak and dumb so as to elevate the women, but to have the females earn the respect of alpha males realistically, through their innate intelligence, compassion and resilience. Whether or not this project is greenlit, it's allegedly a 50-50 situation. Apparently, Marvel Studios' head honcho Kevin Feige is keen on some elements, but not altogether sold on the story as a whole. So, perhaps Whedon's screenplay will need to be retooled a bit before Robert Downey Jr. starts growing out the distinctive goatee-beard-moustache combo. My digital digits are certainly crossed for this one.